Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. If you like videos on vampire movies and TV shows, leave a like, subscribe, and maybe check out my other videos. Today I'm going to be looking at the vampires in the limited time Netflix series Midnight Mass. The show has 7 episodes and each one is about an hour long. I had scrolled past the show a few times not really looking into it, but then I started getting a lot of requests from you guys asking me to cover it which made me wonder if it had vampires in it, and sure enough it did. I didn't realize it at all because they don't present it that way, which I thought was pretty cool. Although there is vampires in the show, it's not the only focus of the show, and I think if you didn't care about vampires, you would still enjoy it. And this is just my opinion, I'm not Roger Ebert or anything, but I think Midnight Mass is one of the best Netflix originals I've seen, and some of the actors in it were amazing. In my opinion, Father Paul Hill or Monsignor Pruitt definitely stole the show without a doubt, but the character Bev Keen was also amazing, and there was times where I hated her so much. She's one of those characters you love to hate, and if an actor or actress can truly make you dislike a character, they're doing a great job. The show takes place on Crockett Island, a small island that has a fishing community. The people in the town talk about an oil spill that happened a few years ago that really affected the fishing and that forced a lot of people to sell their homes and move off island, leaving the island a ghost of its former self. One resident says they used to be hundreds, and now they're just dozens. Monsignor Pruitt was the head of the church on the island, but he was very old and stricken with dementia, but a lot of the people in the town were in denial of his fading mind. As a gift of Monsignor, the people of the church put their money together so he could see Jerusalem before he died, to walk in the same steps as Jesus. But unfortunately, Monsignor was much further gone than anyone on the island wanted to acknowledge. While on a tour traveling to Damascus, Monsignor Pruitt got separated from his group and became lost in the desert. There was a sandstorm blowing intensely he could barely see but he managed to find what looked like the mouth of a cave. All he knew was that he had to get out of the storm. Upon entering, he travels further into the ruin using a match for light and sees a pair of glowing eyes in the dark. Scared, he drops the match and the light goes out. He lights another and eventually the creature attacks him, biting his neck and feeding on his blood. Monsignor, seeing the wings, thought it was an angel and started saying, angel, angel, over and over. For some reason, the creature decided to spare him by feeding him his blood. When Monsignor awakened, he realized he was young again and at the entrance of the ruins. The creature stands there in the dark, watching him, and he pledges allegiance to what he calls an angel. The vampire might have been living in the ruins for hundreds of years, or it's possible he might have just used it as a place to hide during the daylight. Nonetheless, the creature is found in Jerusalem, so it's possible that that's its place of origin. Making me wonder if Monsignor Pruitt was correct in thinking this creature is one of the angels the Bible speaks of, describing people being very afraid when they finally behold an angel. If they can live hundreds or thousands of years and have been living in or around Jerusalem, it's definitely possible that they have played a part in influencing the religion over the centuries. Or they may have been its creators, which is definitely what Monsignor thinks. It's just a theory. Personally, I think that Monsignor is mistaken in thinking the creature is an angel and is just trying to use him and the town to increase the number of its species. It could possibly be the last or one of the last of its kind. So what easier way than to find a secluded island that is easy to control and turn a whole bunch of people at once, creating loyal followers and have a safe haven for vampires. It's worth noting that during the show, the word vampire is never actually used, only referring to the creature itself as a thing or an angel. There's so much to unpack with this show and so much is left to interpretation, which is why you really have to watch it for yourself. Monsignor Pruitt transported the vampire to the island originally in a trunk, a very common way in vampire stories to transport one over the seas or during the day. Although the vampire is seen flying away from the island, so the vampire could come and go as it pleases. But it might have been easier and more secretive for Monsignor to sneak the creature onto the island instead. The vampires of Midnight Mass are tall, pale-skinned creatures with sharp nails like claws and large bat-like wings and ears. These vampires are not shown having any traditional weaknesses like crosses, holy water, garlic, or a stake through the heart. But as usual, a stake through the heart would kill anything. Vampires are immortal, and when you consume vampire blood or become a vampire, you will age backwards until your body reaches its peak state. But when children consume vampire blood, they don't seem to age up, so becoming a vampire can make you younger, but not older. To become a vampire, you must be bitten or consume the blood of a vampire. Monsignor Pruitt has most of the town unknowingly consume blood by putting it in the Holy Communion they all drink from in the church. Once you have consumed vampire blood or been bitten, you are not a full vampire yet. In this state, people are seen becoming younger, aches and pains going away, 
and Eliza was even able to walk after being paralyzed from the waist down during a hunting accident. You do not crave blood, and you can walk in the sunlight no problem. However, when a doctor on the island takes someone's blood who has consumed vampire blood and puts it in the sunlight, it causes the blood to catch fire violently. But the doctor says in this state, there's not enough of the vampirism virus in the blood to be burned through the skin. But if the blood is directly exposed to sunlight, it will burn. Once you die and become a full vampire, the sunlight will burn you. If someone who hasn't died and stops consuming vampire blood, they will lose the benefits they gained like walking in Elise's case and you will return to your normal state. But to become a full vampire, you must die while having vampire blood in your system. After you die, a few minutes later you will return as a vampire and the cravings for blood will begin. People are seen having an immediate thirst for blood attacking their own family. Some people even crying after asking what they have done saying they killed their families and they don't know why. Vampires seem to go into a trance like state when feeding as newly turned vampires always become infatuated with blood when they see it and the main vampire while feeding gets shot multiple times but he doesn't stop feeding. And again later while feeding on a girl she cuts his wings with a knife and while making some quiet groaning noises he doesn't realize what has happened until after he stops and becomes angry. Although we do see two residents who become full vampires and as we see other people being turned into vampires and killed the husband says he's hungry and he feels it but he didn't kill anyone. He adds that this thing doesn't change who you really are. So maybe it's just a matter of willpower and someone with a stronger mind would be able to fight the cravings. Crockett Island has an overpopulation of cats because apparently some people brought cats onto the island a long time ago and set them free. After a storm, a large number of cats are found washed on shore, drained of all their blood. So while the creature was on the island, it was living off the animal population, which means these vampires can feed from any blood, not just human blood. Once someone becomes a full vampire by dying, they don't seem to have any increased strength or speed. Their eyes become reflective, so they could possibly have better vision in the dark. One ability they do gain is the ability to heal. When a man is turned into a vampire and awakens, he tries to run out the door but is burned by sunlight. When he goes back inside, his smaller burns seem to heal almost instantly, and within a few minutes, they are all gone, and Monsignor says that his broken neck healed in less than 6 hours, and the burns should take no time at all. Monsignor himself is shot in the head and recovers a short while later. The more grievous wounds don't heal instantly, but they do heal. Monsignor also describes after being turned, light will look brighter and you will experience colors and smells you never have. And we see when a vampire looks at light, it seems to have a strange aura around it. Monsignor Pruitt was taking the vampire blood a lot longer than anyone else. He said the angel followed him back to their town from Jerusalem. Because he has been taking the blood for much longer than everyone else, he seems to be changing. He has intense fits of pain and a ringing noise that I think could be the vampirism virus changing his body from the inside. And possibly after long enough, even the people of the town would start becoming more like the full vampire. Monsignor Pruitt says that he can feel the Holy Spirit growing inside him, but I have a feeling it might not be the Holy Spirit. One girl that consumed the vampire blood unknowingly was pregnant. After seeing some blood, thinking something is wrong, she gets a checkup at the doctor on the island and they can hear the baby's heartbeat and everything seems fine. However, when she goes to the mainland to get a second opinion, by then things have gotten a lot worse. The doctor informs her that she isn't pregnant, and from what they can tell, she was never pregnant. Later, after realizing what's going on, the doctor from the island surmises that just like how her mother was healed of her dementia and got younger, this virus causes rapid healing and caused her body to heal and remove the new tissue that was the baby. So that means a vampire wouldn't be able to have a baby the traditional way a human does and might have another means of giving birth. Alternatively, the only way for vampires to quote unquote reproduce might be to turn a human. It's an interesting concept I've never really seen explored in a vampire story before. The show leans on the idea that vampirism is of biological origins. It spreads through the blood and we never see any vampire performing any supernatural feats. Other than this one time when the vampire kills Bull and seems to lure him into the house by mimicking his own voice back to him. The doctor on the island describes the vampirism on the island as a condition similar to porphyria. This is a real disease that contributed to a lot of vampire myths through history because the symptoms are quite strange. 
The condition is actually a group of disorders that results from a buildup of natural chemicals in the body. It can cause photosensitivity, so your skin becomes irritated by sunlight or even artificial light and causes the skin to become thin and more pale. It can also make the gums recede, making the teeth appear larger and more fang-like. One of the symptoms that was the most vampiric was that someone with porphyria produces less heme, a component of hemoglobin, which is what carries oxygen from the lungs to the muscles. To combat their lack of heme, patients were sometimes told to drink animal blood, which is probably where a lot of blood drinking vampire myths came from. And the condition also caused urine to turn a dark red, which a lot of people probably thought was a cause of them drinking blood, but it wasn't true. The doctor thinks that what is happening to the people on the island is very similar to that condition, not the same one, but possibly in the same family, she said. You don't hear mentions of this condition that could possibly be the origin of vampires in film and TV shows today, so I appreciate they included that lore in the show. Well, that's the vampires from Midnight Mass. This is now probably one of my favorite vampire stories. I really like how they kept the main vampire very mysterious, and you don't know much about him, and the tie-in with the religious stuff just adds another layer of unsettling sometimes. Don't ask me why, but a church can make everything creepier. I think this story would have made an amazing movie because the main story of Monsignor Pruitt is so good, but I enjoy being able to learn about some of the other characters too, and you wouldn't be able to do that if around 7 hours was crunched into probably 2 hours. Eventually I want to cover other movies that I really like, not just vampire movies, including Constantine with Keanu Reeves, and possibly some episodes of Love, Death, and Robots. Also, Oat Studios' new group of shorts I've seen on Netflix have some crazy episodes that I'd love to talk about. If there's any TV shows or movies you'd like me to take a look at, please leave them in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching, leave a like if you haven't, and if you enjoy vampire shows and movies, subscribe and maybe check out my other videos. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.